A youthful criminal gang has terrorized many people here without discrimination. It's hard to find anyone willing to openly talk about it and not so many people feel free to discuss their activities for fear of being targeted. As we sneak through the crowded and dusty lanes and alleys of Kayole State in Nairobi's Eastlands area, it's pretty much normal as everyone goes about the business trying to eke out a living. But behind the facade of hustling lies a vicious gang that is not shy to strike in broad daylight and whose wrath in the night cover has left many dead or maimed. Kutoka masata tu siku kio kipatika na inje labdu metoka kazi ni late o na handwa. Ato kitembe ona wesa nyanga nywa simu ona wesa tano na wana vijana ona kuangusha shini ona kupiga sengi ona pata wat mutu ameolewa njiani. The criminal group is called Gaza. It's not just life they snuff out at will without flinching. Their crime spree extends to business premises in Kayole. Their trail of terror always sends one chilling message. We are in charge. Like this footage showing a cashier inside a supermarket about to close business at 8 p.m. This woman is engrossed in balancing the accounts and preparing the point of sale machines for the next day. Having a warm chat with three other people among them, a security guard and a woman carrying a baby on her back, this looks like any other ordinary evening. Until four hooded Gaza members walk in casually, brandishing pistols. They empty the cash register before walking away. Luckily, no one is injured. The robbery incident lasts only two minutes, but what is unsettling is not the robbery itself, but how the victims don't panic and afterwards go on with their lives like nothing happened. It only meant two things. Either this is not the first time they've come face to face with a gang, or this is not the first time they were being robbed. In this manner. So, I'm going to security. Around the Kunama Vijana, I'm going to go to Kayole, Sijim, I'm going to go to Gaza, Saturn, Sindua, Ajama, Tafanyaje. To keep Toka Kitukama Satano, we will be able to get a Sita, Ukipatikana Sita, or Gaza on a Quingilia. Upper Beren to Kuana Shida of Kuzi, Kudivitatu, Mojanito of Potimo, Ginanito of Gaza, and Ginanito of Smata. Nabada, I'm going to go to Kuadati. Tukagudua, tukajua ni yakina nani, na tukaanza kukabiliana na wao kikamirifu. The Gaza Gang of Kayole takes its name from the infamous Gaza Gang from Portmore in Jamaica. Members of this gang steal and kill under the leadership of jailed popular Jamaican dancehall artist Vibes Cartel. In 2014, at the age of 38, Vibes Cartel was sentenced to life imprisonment for two murders, illegal possession of firearms, and armed robbery. His parole will only be eligible in 2049. In Kayole, Vibes Cartel is more than just a dancehall artist whose music has a huge influence. He is regarded as a god and as a cult following. Just like the Gaza gang in Jamaica, the gang in Kayole does not shy away from taking to social media in their nondescript style to brag about their exploits. Their weapons of choice are daggers and guns. This phone video recording filmed in Italy showing a police officer killing a gang member in cold blood sparked a nationwide debate on human rights and extrajudicial killings. An enraged public tired of the silent sufferings in the hands of these gangs spoke openly about the heroics of the officers who took out the lives of the young men as others condemned the police act as unjustifiable. As the debate was raging on, a gang member in one of Kenya's prisons, whose name will remain anonymous for security reasons, was making a startling confession in a book. The astonishing contents of the book were about the exploits of the Gaza gang. We will attempt to keep this confession as authentic in its grammar as much as possible and only edit out sensitive parts. We will call him Frank. Frank, in his book titled The Notorious Gaza Criminal Gang that was obtained by NTV, shares a rare glimpse into the underworld of the gang and how they operate, including names of those either supporting them financially 
or stalking the armory. In riveting details, he throws in a disclaimer that is not a snitch, but a reformed criminal who only wants to set the record straight. Frank begins, What I'm about to write is very sensitive, as it touches on a very loathed and feared criminal gang in Kayole, an Nairobi's Eastlands area. If this information gets in the hands of the police or Gaza members, the police may either arrest me and charge me or kill me. Gaza members will definitely take me out and eliminate me for giving out their secrets. This is a very organized criminal gang, he continues, which comprises youth between the age of 13 to 40 years. It has a leader or chairman who goes by the name Kagwanja or chairman. He is a 32-year-old Kenyan man who is responsible for many criminal acts, including the near-fatal and paralyzing of an administration police officer called Major on October 2016. He is also responsible for the murder of a Gaza girl member turned snitch called Fatima, who sold out two of his sergeants in 2016, and they were killed by police corporals called Munyao and Vaite. Kagwanje doesn't like to be called by his name, and rather prefers to be called chairman. Frank continues to say, I prefer stealing with the mind, kuibana akili, as they call it. However, in his writing, he doesn't explain how he did it. Frank gives details of working as a tout on Manyanja Road in Kayole for Matatus under the prime city and pinpoint circles respectively. He continues, we have a gang of 60 strong sergeants who do various crimes for us and we pay them by commission, namely stealing M-Pesa and bank agents, snatching smartphones, housebreaking, carjacking, kidnapping, torture and assault, peddling of drugs, just to name but a few. We prefer not to shed innocent blood and as long as you cooperate and give us what we want, we will let you go and leave. But if you try to disobey us, we will not hesitate to shoot you in the head. Our gang is divided into five groups of four people each. Each group has a fully loaded 33-round Seska pistol and a Beretta pistol. These are our tools of trade. The guns are usually carried only when going to a deal, and they are carried by Gaza girls. Frank in his confession lays bare a common characteristic with many gangs in the city. The boys don't necessarily carry firearms. The girls do. Sababusi wasichana inaeleweka saa zingine ai uanga tu uanga uanga tu sachiwi tukienda mahali so unapata si ndio tunabeba if ni gun panga visu si ndio tunabeba vifaa unaweza beba kama mtoi unabeba mtoto alafu unamwe unaeka panga kwanza kisha unaeka mtoto wanaume wako kwa wapasi kubeba bunduki sana au kwa kwa napaswa so unapata si wasichana ndio tunabeba saa ya kwenda Tini nategemea tunaenda wapi kama kuna security kali inabidi siende sisi ndio tunabeba Frank mentions names of two local leaders who support the activities in Kayole He says our funding comes from our leaders namely MC Eguyo MP Ndirash and the money we take from the business people for security The MCA mentioned is Abdi Guyo Hassan I sought to find out if this was true It is not true and I think uh, if there is any politician who is financing that, I think the intelligence system, the police, must be knowing that. Yeah. Who do you think are the major financiers? There is no financer for these gangs. Our ni wakora ambayo wana thrive na na kuinyanya watu, na kuibia watu. Na kama wangu kwa na financiers, there is no reason why wafanya dini, wakuwa na ishi na maisha kuibia watu. So at a personal level, you're not involved with them directly or indirectly? No, no, no. Me, I'm supporting police to crack down on them. Uh, two weeks ago, we were, we were having a meeting there, at, uh, specifically near police station, and we asked the police to deal with them ruthlessly. And we will support the police on that. Okay. Because we are not going to tolerate young boys and buy one harass our mama. Wana haras waze, wana haras kila muti. You cannot do your things freely in this country. So I'm not supporting Gaza. I'm supporting police in their action with in dealing with these crook guns. Ata kabani kupiga disasi tunaunga mkoro. 
Frank continues to write, Police also find us and give us bullets. One bullet they gave us at a cost of 3,000 shillings. They also rent out their guns to us, especially AK-47 rifles at a fee of 20,000 shillings per deal. But police turn their backs sometimes on our sergeants if they suspect that they are snitches or if they refuse to pay them their money. Frank says that each month, the OCS Kayole police station and Buruburu police station would receive 100,000 shillings to allow them conduct their business of crime without police interference. He did not mention the names of the officers or give a time frame when this happened. And because of several police reshuffles in the two areas in the recent past, NTV cannot verify the claim. Frank then moves from the gang's funding sources and support to assets. He says, we have many assets, namely cars, which by day act as taxis and by night act as our getaway cars from crime scenes. When a car is stolen from around the outskirts of Nairobi, it is brought at Tushauriane in Kayole, where it is cut down and all its parts disassembled. Tushauriane in Kayole is a long stretch of many garages, from private cars to PSVs, everything is here. Frank says the stolen cars are brought here and stripped down as spare parts. He continues to say, a stolen car will cost between half a million to 700,000 shillings. And our motto as the Portmore Empire is, if you don't make money, you don't make sense. And if you don't make sense, you don't make money. His confession turns to how they exploit legal tussles over property and land, especially from prominent personalities. He writes, We have also taken people's land, namely the late Gerishon Kirima's ranch in Kayole, where we are subdividing it and selling it to unsuspecting people. A 50 by 100 plot goes between 50,000 shillings to 200,000 and can be sold to 10 people who will be left fighting each other for the ownership. The rest of the farm, we have subdivided it amongst ourselves. Gaza criminal gang or the Potmo Empire has genuine businesses as well, he says. We have lorries and handcarts for garbage collection and a Potmo garbage collection. We have a club named Gaza Wild Club, which also acts as our meeting place. And this club is strictly for Gaza members only. We visited the club that opens between 5 p.m. till dawn but found the name has just been changed. From the outside, nothing extraordinary. On the inside, just what you'd expect. A bartender and assorted drinks on shelves. The name Gaza is only inscribed inside the club's butchery. Something interesting in Frank's confession is an occasion the media captured in the year 2015. This was a ceremony before the police at Njiru shopping center. Hundreds of residents, including victims of the gang, turned up to catch a glimpse of the dreaded gang. A public denouncement of the Gaza gang members pledging to uphold the law and stop stealing and killing after surrendering to the authorities. The 60 gang members, many of them teenagers in their early 20s, promised to stop their criminal activities after being offered amnesty by the police. Back to Frank's confession, and he tells another story about what happened here. He says, in 2015, some Gaza members surrendered their guns to the OCS of Kayole police station. But that was just managed to fool the police and the general public because as soon as the media turned off their cameras, money changed hands and our guns were returned. Gaza girls act as our prostitutes in Gaza Wild Club. 
A girl doesn't belong to one man, she belongs to all of us. But for the generals, their girls are a no-go zone for other members. Frank puts a pause in his writing and it was clear he wasn't done with his confession. A fellow prison mate suspected he was a member of a terror group and by the time authorities got his write-up, it was clear he was just a gang member. The little he revealed paints a grim picture of a youthful group who live by the gun and will die by the gun. Dennis Okari, NTV.